Thank you so much for introducing me. And actually, I, want, I also want to say thank you to Professor Juras to invite invited me to, today to speak about the Kachin uh, women's and the Kachin conflict. So um, my name is again uh, Ano, and I'm also belong to the Kachin ethnic group, and I'm from the northern part of Burma. Or Myanmar. You can call it either Burma or Myanmar. It's okay. Um, so, like probably many of you might already know that, you know, there's like long, uh, the longest civil war uh, stay is happening has in Myanmar. So, which is true. And in northern part of Burma, and they stay now fighting is going on uh, between the um, ethnic armed group, the Kachin, Kachin Independence Army, and also, uh, and with um, Burmese Army. So, before I go, Father, talking about the whole conflict, I want I want to introduce my uh, family, and this is my grandmother, uh, her eighty years old, and she her entire life been like suffer from the civil war, and again she has to flee her home from um, like because of the fighting in two thousand eleven. So now that she is living with my uh, parents, but uh, my. Uh, that's my aunt and my handsome nephew and niece, uh, nephew and niece, and um, I have my aunt's family, my uncle family. At the moment, they are living in these IDP camps. That's like internally displaced uh, people camps. So, um, uh, with my grandmother and my uncles, auntie, uh, including them, there is about like hundred thousands of like internally displaced people, they have like flee from, the, uh, from their home um, because of the fighting and come and share that in the way the government control area. So the, this is uh, like the blue, uh, all this, and uh, the dot, these are the camp where the government control area and the reds, they are uh, along the border where the uh, Gachin independence uh, organizations control area. So there was, uh, according to the OCHA, is like 98,675 uh, uh, of them. Like they are living in this like blue uh, all this area. And then there was about 60 to 70,000 of people they are living in this, the, all this red um, the area. So that made it together, there was about 150,000 of them like at, at the moment they are in the camp, uh, living in the area since 2011. So, um, because of the fighting, there's a lot of like human rights violation has happened, and including the Kachin Women Association Thailand, which I used to work the organization and stay uh, almost a member of the organizations, and the organization and um, many human rights organization has been accused that that the military has been using the like strategy or tactics that um, uh, uh, particularly uh, uh, violate or like using the civilian as violating like civil, civil rights, like, the, um, like they've been using purposely uh, to attack the civilian because they wanted to prevent uh, the civilian support to uh, the other armed groups like KIA. So that's the reason why they do a lot of, like, they use a lot of like human rights violations, like including Killings and like tortures and arrests of women as a sex slave and also um, there's many like they burn down the whole houses and um, also like so many other human rights violation happens. Actually, my uncle's house like also like burned down. Like he just built that I used uh, before the uh, fightings happens. So that was many human rights violations happen. So because of these violations, um, many like civilians have suffered from the conflict, but women have suffered most. It's because the women are more vulnerable because they were like, um, uh, many women that they were like captured and work uh, as a sex slave. And also um, like many women, they were like raped and some of them were, they were even killed and the Kachin Women's Association Thailand, they have documented like since 2000, 
11 that there was 77 uh, cases uh, from 2011 to 2015. This is some of the case. And then there was, uh, in the case, from, from the 73 uh, of them, they were like uh, rape, and then three of, uh, four cases of uh, attempt to rape. And then there was many women, they were like um, the, uh, killed after the rape. And for example, like, uh, there's uh, like 30, uh, 32 years old girl, she would say that I couldn't remember how many times uh, the Bami soldiers were raped, but then uh, she was like slammed and like, kicked with force, and then uh, he thought that, you know, uh, this lady just, she just died, so she, uh, he dumped her to the river, and then he, she could not remember, but then uh, finally, like, she, would, uh, she, luckily, she stayed alive. And also, there's many cases. Uh, that even like uh, as young as like seven years to nine years old girls, they were raped, and then the oldest, like they were like, 73, the uh, grandmother even like, got raped. So there was many, like uh, many rape cases, rape cases happens. These are just um, summer case, and then there's more, uh, I put it as Excel. So, so there are uh, uh, many rape cases happen, but then like we cannot get the Justice or like a solution from what happens. So I'm going to tell two more two cases um, that like actually we can we say that it's a little bit famous of the case because uh, the whole nation like got, we uh, know about the case, but then until now we did not get any solution uh, of the case. So this uh, this is two of like volunteer. Teachers, uh, uh, Maran Lura and like, Dambao uh, Kondangsin, they was like 20 and 21 years old. They were volunteer teachers from the Gachin Baptist Conventions. They went to the, this northern part of the Shan States, so they worked as a volunteer teacher. And uh, one night, um, uh, that was in 2015, January 19, uh, the three years ago, this case happened. So they were like, they came back from the um, the but they pray party of the Chai, and then and it's just a small town, so everybody know everyone. So like they came back. So at that night there was like military uh, life, uh, like uh, what's called LFD, like fence battalion, like five o three. This um, the troop like they were, uh, they came, and then. Uh, and after the, the, the two of uh, the child, they came back at night um, and they were like raped and brutally killed. And then the next morning, like um, the whole uh, people, village are found. And then the, so, uh, the officer would just say that uh, these are the only people that I have. And then they would, there's uh, investigations happens, but then like they couldn't find anyone. But then the villager also know that uh, found that there's like 12 or more of them, they, are, like, they left the next morning. And then there was also police will come, um, police come and investigate this uh, crime area, crime site, and they take all this evidence and they just put it in the, uh, all the evidence, put it in the trash, like not really like proper way of like um, maintaining all the evidence, but they just put all the evidence in the plastic, and then also threat them to all the villager that you are not uh, don't take any photo, and if you take a photo, we will arrest you or like take the, all the uh, take your camera. Like they threat them the village, so like they are afraid to take a photo of all this like crime site, and then um, at the same time, there is also the civilians like getting back these conventions and the other. Activists they set up the uh, investigation, independent investigation committee, but then government never accept, the former government like never accept the, uh, the the result, and until now they never get the, the who are the perpetrator. They never we never get any the result of uh, the case. So this um, this is the report that the Kitchen Women Association Thailand and Look at Eight Network has um, like analyze the whole cases and also investigate some of uh, the cases and, and produce the report. So 
if you wanted to know more about the, the case, that you can go deeper and read the, the report. And then there's another case. This is a case uh, also some Um It's like uh, she, uh, she was also uh, like captured uh, during when uh, she, uh, she and her, <coughs> like her and her husband and also father-in-law, they were working in the cornfield. She was captured, but then they were trying. Uh, her husband and father-in-law were they trying to. They ran away and then they escaped, but then like she was they like captured. And until now, we don't know what happens. I'm not going to tell detail about it because I wanted to show some uh, of uh, the, her documentary case, which I also helped my uh, my friends made it, but I also helped him. Um, so I will just uh, show this for five minutes and I will pause and I will continue for another case. <clears throat> Thousands have died during the six decade long civil war in Burma. Although there are now ceasefires in many parts of the country, there is still fighting going on, as in Kachin State. Many soldiers have died during Burma's civil war, but, as always, it's the civilian population that suffer the most. Villagers, most belonging to the ethnic minorities, are used by the Burmese army as porters and minesweepers, and many women are abused by the soldiers. They are the forgotten victims. This is the story of one of these victims. Yeah, yeah. has since gaining independence in 1948 been beset by decades of civil war. The Kachin, who live in the countries far north, are one of more than a dozen ethnic minorities who took up arms against the central government. Formed in 1961, the Kachin Independence Organization, or KIO, is Burma's second strongest armed rebel group. The KIO, who first signed a ceasefire with the central government in 1994, has an extensive territory concentrated along the Chinese border. Roija is born in 1989. She grows up in an area controlled by the KIO. During most of her youth, there is a ceasefire between the KIO and the central government. In 2005, she meets Dao Lung. <laughs> Parents live close by, and the two families help each other with their farming. In 2010, Roija gives birth to a daughter, but their lives are soon disrupted by national and international politics. In June 2011, the Burmese government ends the ceasefire with the KIO, and much of Kachin state becomes a war zone. The Burmese soldiers stationed near the KIO territory coexisted with their Kachin neighbors in relative peace for nearly two decades. That's why the Burmese army commanders replace them with fresh troops when the fighting resumes. A local Kachin social worker, who can't show her face on camera, hears about the replacements from a village head. Before the, another new troops come, that the old commander tell, told him, move, please move. The people, you know, the soldier, the new troop, that uh, were coming soon, they will don't understand anymore about you. They will play, uh, do uh, you know, harm things and many things they can do. So please move, move, they said, this captain. Soon the Kachin villagers feel the change. 
Many are forced to flee to refugee camps when their farms become the front line. On the 28th of October 2011, Roija, her husband and her father-in-law, go to their farm to harvest their corn. It's the start of a day that will forever change their lives. At the same time, a group of six Burmese soldiers is preparing to go on a food gathering mission. We can talk with one of this group as he was captured by the KIO in early 2012 after he tried to go to China. He got lost and wandered into KIO territory. So I'm just going to pause here. Um, and so, you know, the, how that, that the case happened. So uh, her father-in-law and her husband, they will escape, but then like, she was like caught in that uh, place. And then we trying um, with the local community, or local civil society groups and some activists, we're trying to like submit this case to the court uh, 
and then the Kachin State Court, they did not really do anything, so that uh, they submitted to Nebido, that's like the highest court, and then, but then they said that there is no evidence uh, of this, uh, like, uh, this happens, and then not from the, uh, their side, but from the military, the other side, and then the case just like uh, dismissed. There's no hearing, anything happens. So like there's no uh, justice for the disappearance of her case. Um, and then, So civilian, uh, particularly from the Kachin state, or like out, out any other ethnic area, we did not get any like justice. And especially when it's come to the military, uh, it's very difficult to find the justice for the victims and for the survivor. So uh, recently, the report the, from the International Commission of Jurists, they just released the report, and it's also mentioned again the Duras and A constitutions that has been like uh, protect to soldiers, police and officers from public criminal pro or prosecution for serious crime that they committed. And also like all this case, like all this human rights violation, all the case that we actually submit to the um, trying to submit to Nima National Human Rights Commission, which set up in 2015, um, oh no, sorry, 2011. And, but then it also say clearly that like, they will not invest, investigate any crimes that uh, happen in the ethnic area. Ethnic area means that Kachin State, not uh, all this like uh, other ethnic rather uh, area. So you can see how uh, much like we got the protection in terms of the uh, legal, legally. So I am uh, shifting to the human uh, IGB situation and human trafficking issue. Um, I will be doing really short, and then we can go for the question and answer later on. Um, so when are we looking at the human rights trafficking uh, issue, so they, we know that there's also push factor and pull factor. Uh, and when I uh, when we look at the push factor, they are. Uh, the IDP internet displaced people, especially in the, along the border area, they have been living since 2011 in the, this makeshift camp. Uh, like more, now, is like six, seven years old, and they do not have access. The uh, they do, but then like very few uh, of the access of uh, humanitarian aid from the international community, so, and also government, especially in the past, they restrict uh, to get. Uh, in, uh, humanitarian aid to get to those area, and also uh, they do not have like uh, much work in that area because it is like small uh, area in the camps. So there is no farming to do. So that I uh, for them like it's easy to go to China and get a job. Um, so that many of them they travel to China and then get, get a job, but. Um, there is no legal protection for them because they don't have any documents to cross to China and they don't have any like uh, legal document to work in China, so which are more vulnerable for them to trafficking. Um, and um, there's also like fighting stay uh, going on and there's, uh, I, I remember that uh, in 2013, I was in the, uh, I went and like conduct the research uh, in that Liza, there's where the fighting is going on. So the military, they shell the bomb, and they share artillery and like bomb uh, where the people live, so like where the civilian live, and it's, they share the bomb, and it hit, um, and it's killed three uh, children, and also uh, several of them, they got injured in that way the IDP uh, people live. And also, recently, there was in, uh, Christmas Eve, actually, 24. So they share again a bomb. They share um, the bomb, and it's hit, actually. One of my friends, like, she's also a volunteer teacher. Like, she went and visited there uh, during that time, and she's also actually studying. So she got like, hit, and at the moment, she's in the hospital in China. So like, it's not safe for them. 
and for them like it is not safe to live in the boat in the camp and also it's not safe to live in the China uh, however in the China side at least they can uh, get some kind of job so that they can support their family and they can support their children to send to the school so they take the risk and they uh, go they cross the China border and they try to get a job in that area so that um, many of them like they will traffic to uh, the many um, to to Chinese men or like fa some family as a bride or also uh, for the labor. So some of them they will even use a, a, uh, like they were drugs, so they don't remember where they were. So all the things, uh, all the case happens. And Kitchen Women Association Thailand again that we did research two thousand eleven to two thousand thirteen, and there was a twenty four cases of human human women, particularly women traffic. Uh, traffic happens and then for them it's also um, not only for uh, those women who are traffic uh, they do not have any protection but also uh, some people who can could return back for even for them is like uh, uh, they have all the stigma and the community uh, like not really accept them so it was a lot of like uh, issues uh, happens in that uh, it, because of the human trafficking so um, I'm going to conclude with a com uh, what can international community do so actually the community-based organization and NGO we have been like calling for the commission of inquiry to investigate crime against humanity and war crimes that happened not only in Kitchen State but the whole part of the country that was we've been calling since 2011 um, and also, uh, I myself also involved in this. Like, you know, we're trying to do a lot of uh, lobby advocacy to the UNGA uh, to get a resolution on human rights situation in Burma, uh, on Myanmar, and also to keep like special reporter on uh, human rights. And and actually, it's challenging uh, to do this advocacy lobbying. Like, um, like 2012, 2013, like we. Uh, do a lot of lobby advocacy. Uh, I'm just th saying as a Gachin activist. Um, so in 2012, 2013, there there is one paragraph about the that they are concerned about the human rights situation in Gachin State. But then 2014, 15, and until now, they they did not mention anything about the Gachin situation. And but then they say they just make a general statement about the situa human rights situation. Um, it is also happened because there was 2014, 15, there was pre uh, previous government, President Teng Seng and government, they're trying to do this um, uh, national ceasefire agreement with the other uh, armed groups. There was like uh, eight armed groups, they have signed the uh, NCA. So like it's more like welcoming and that them. So it was not too much condemning. So it was difficult um, uh, for difficult to do the lobbying. And also there was I, I'm not going to say who said that to me, but um, when I did this uh, lobby advocacy, and there is one gentleman, uh, like say say that to me that oh why can't why can't you just wait for another twenty years? And your country will be more, um, get better. And now your country just like changing the democracy. So, um, you we don't need to support for the UNTA. Why don't you just wait for another twenty years and everything will be get better? So like it was so difficult to do lobby to uh, to the uh, representative UN representative from uh, you know different country, and also. Um, international uh, community to support on humanitarian aid uh, especially now like it's been like six years uh, six seven years of the uh, conflict and then people are living in these makeshift camps and they have and they have a uh, little access of the uh, humanitarian aid uh, what I'm talking is like especially in the particularly in the border area so many of them they did not accept access of the humanitarian support so we are also pushing to the international community to support uh, on the 
humanitarian aid. So I think that's it, my presentation, and then we can go on to questions. And okay. uh, very good and interesting presentation. Uh, I'm sorry, actually, you must have covered in your presentation and some of this. What is the basic root cause of this conflict? Mm -hmm. Well, actually, I didn't uh, explain it here because I it would. I hope that it will come out from the <laughs> question. <laughs> so um, when we're looking at the uh, conflict that frames, and we can see this, uh, there's uh, mm. framing. It also has a problem, and also this uh, emotional uh, uh, part is also has a problem, and of course, that also business. Uh, the in Gachin State, uh, we have like very rich nat raw natural resources like jade, gold, t uh, timber, uh, and many other mineral, uh, and you know um, the some of the uh, Gachin ethnic arm group. They also uh, wanted to control all the natural resources. Um, I uh, mean that they have also have the right to uh, control of the resources. At the same time, the military, they wanted to also control of the resources as well. Uh, there's a lot of the military and elites, uh, they, uh, they own some of the jade mining and many resources, uh, the mining area as well. <coughs> and there's a part of it. And also, yes, like emotionally, like it's been like, the conflict has an on and on and on, and it's like building up all these emotions and many like young, um, Gachin young people, and even like they, they could not suffer longer, and then they said, okay, uh, <coughs> my friends are, are getting killed and dying, and I would just I, I wanted to fight for my uh, my country, my people, so like they would join to the Gachin armed groups, and then there's more fightings, and also a lot of women also like suffer from the like human rights abuses and all that cases happen and then some of them actually even join some many women also join to the um, group as well so that's like uh, created you know cycle of the violence again so what the, what the Kachin group wants basically mm -hmm. what there is ultimate demand yes so they uh, in actually the Kachin ethnic armed group and many uh, the other uh, the Kachin people initially they uh, fight for independence, but then later on they said uh, we wanted to have the federal um, country where every, and especially that where the state can have their own autonomy and they have their own uh, autonomy uh, to control of natural resources and also you know the, uh, they have their rights to control politics, uh, political situations and all that thing. So, and then now that they are the man to build a federal, they said genuine federal democracy. So that is like now that they are demanding and uh, fighting. Separate fighting. from Burma. Sorry? Separate from Burma. Not, the, not federal mean, uh, it's not a separating, but like uh, have, they have their own autonomy. Autonomy to control in right. uh, resources and politics. Like, but not, not the separate, but part of the... Uh, country of Myanmar. Yes. So how do you feel about Aung San Suu Kyi? She's taken a lot of criticism internationally the last few years for not speaking out enough about human rights abuses in Burma. My personally, um, I, I can also understand like she has so much things to do and also she doesn't have much power over to military. Uh, um, like all the, whatever come to the military issue, like she cannot really, I see that she cannot do much, uh, but she is doing her best. And yes, and then she said, um, actually I really admire her, but then she said, um, she said that she is not a human rights person and she's a politician, so I will just do uh, in like, uh, not, I will just do as a politician, not like a human rights activist. Is she um, still popular in Kachin State? Um, or was she ever? I don't know. It's a good question. Is whether she's popular. Uh, yes, some part very popular, but many, like Gachinun people, um, 
actually in the election they vote for her. Many of them <coughs> vote for her. But then it is like there is no choice. And also like in the political party, in the Gatim political party, they uh, they have they wasn't unite like there's uh, three four different like uh, big political Gatim party, but then they wasn't unite la last election. But then uh, for general public like for them also like difficult to choose. Um, so that's why they I think that the, the reason maybe that's why they uh, vote for her. But then now like there is a lot of um, the Gachin political party are also <coughs> unite. So in terms of the political way probably it will be different um, when it's come to us in twenty it will be a little bit different. So I cannot I cannot say because there is no uh, like we don't have like vote uh, with a popular like voting uh, check but a lot of like uh, people they wanted to vote for the Christian political party. Yeah. Uh, what's the role of China? So it's uh, support KIA or uh, China as a mediator? Um, yeah, actually, Chinese uh, Ch uh, Chinese government uh, has been involved in uh, several of the peace uh, negotiation between the uh, Gachin Independence Army and the government. Like when there was a negotiation, Chinese government been involved several times. So it's like, um, and it is like big role that the Chinese government be taking taking now. And I think it's also very important. Do you think China is neutral in these conflicts, or it's hard to tell? <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I didn't really uh, analyze uh, Chinese role much, so I cannot like really answer now. But it, whether it's like neutral, um, I think the Chinese government to be friendly, and Chinese government also have its own interests, so. I cannot say it's very neutral in that. What's, like, what's their relationship? Oh. Um, actually, in, in the whole in a, in the whole part of Burma, we have a lot of the investment from the the Chinese uh, company and like, government back of the company. Um, yeah, actually, in Gachin State, there is one like uh, this big mega uh, the mega dam project. That's mid zone. It was controversial. It said that now uh, it's been uh, what is it like stopped for a while, um, but it's still like uh, talk, stay talking uh, about the case uh, about the project. So this is only one project in the Kachin State, but the whole part of the country we have like many many like project. So this uh, their interest and also natural resources. Uh, because we have a lot of raw natural resources, so it's like easy for the um, air transport to China and and uh, to use it. So these are the like government. I think the Chinese government interest, I guess. Yes. Thank you for your talk. Um, <coughs> so the Myanmar government has evolved over the years in some ways, from historic and so forth. Sorry, the the government of Myanmar has yes. been evolving slowly, and it's in a bit of a transition right now. Mm -hmm. How, as I guess identity and function, has the KIA evolved and developed? Is it different now than it was maybe From ten years ago? Ten years ago. As far as how people view it, as far as how people function within it. Uh, so. uh, yes. Um, yeah. Uh, when looking at the Gachin Gachin army, like. Uh, it's yes, it evolved in the past, like uh, after the fight in the ceasefire. Not a lot of like Chin people, you know, like talk about the KIA or or their fightings and they're good or bad, they will not talk about it. But then after the fighting uh, broke up, and then this um, uh, the whole this process, the KIA. Uh, Particularly, got a lot of support from the Gachin community, and uh, because like they see that they have suffered a lot of like human rights abuses, and also like 
uh, nature resources. Uh, they saw that their nature resources were taken and they did not like control any of those things. And then because of the findings, and uh, they see that KIA as a um, like, uh, revo uh, revolution place. You know, like it's like uh, uh, helping like for get better for the kitchens, um, kitchens people life. So like they get they gain actually a lot of support. I'm not sure how you how you answer to that. Um, yeah, yeah, that's my question. Okay, yeah, okay. Another question. Okay. As far as like land rights, um, when civilians are displaced from their farms, are there legal structures for them to reclaim their land, or is it often that people aren't able to come back to their farms in this conflict? Oh, uh, actually, um, it's a good question. Especially many of these, uh, where the fighting areas happen, um, <coughs> some of the area, uh, until now they couldn't return back. And some of those area, there was already digging the gold mining, and they already lost their like rice field or their even the house area. And also, uh, some of them they heard that people, some people are already living in their own houses, and then uh, they don't know how to claim it, or the, and they cannot return return back to their places because this fighting stay active and stay going on. So it was like uh, very difficult for them, and. At the moment, some uh, human rights documentation, like they are like, doing documents that, um, like how many acres do you own, or the lands, and like uh, what kind of property do you have. So based on those property, and then they can claim uh, like later on when there's like um, when there's a political stable. So that was some uh, like docu some documentation group they are working on, but then. Um, also, as to answer a specific question that whether they can claim, many of them they do not have uh, like paper that um, that they own that land. Although like they've been living that area like um, several of their uh, generation, but they, many of them they don't have this land registrations and things like that. So that will be one challenges um, for them to claim to reclaim. I had a question. So you mentioned that a part of the demands um, was involved around the control of natural resources. And so I was curious if you could um, elaborate a little bit on, on what sort of natural resources and how natural resources are playing into the conflict. Because it sounds like there's a lot of stuff. People are losing access to land for farming. Um, but you just mentioned something about gold mining. So mm -hmm. is is there a difference in what people are trying to use the land for and those natural resources? Oh, yeah. Um, so, it's what I um, mentioned about the gold mining is the place where uh, it used to be where, the, um, where people live. And then, because of the fighting, they have to like, move. And now, this, that area, people find gold. So, like, they are already like, digging the gold because um, they obviously there is no um, people will come stop them so that that's a part that is one um, issue and then on the other issue there is all the land especially like uh, Patgans that's a jade mining area in that area um, sometimes uh, some case like company would just like buy the whole uh, mountain and with the um, that local people doesn't even know uh, whether they were like, sold to which company, and it just go like everything's like happen in the central uh, governments, and then they will just come and then like uh, force them to leave, and then the, the company will just start digging all the that area. If they don't remove, but then they will their house will just destroy. So like some uh, many of them like uh, actually has a lot of conflict. Uh, about about uh, ish, conflict about the land grabbing issue happening in that area. Okay. So I wanted to go back to um, you know what you can do about this yeah. specific situation in terms of the you know the abuse of, of women and the human rights abuse, and I was wondering if 
this is a terrible thing to say, but, but the Rohingya conflict has become world known. Most people don't know about this, but the whole world now knows about the Rohingya conflict. Mm -hmm. So is that giving you space to bring this up? I mean, is there more of a movement mm -hmm. towards holding the government accountable for human rights because of the Rohingya situation? Yes. For me, I think, um, um, especially uh, this now, the movement, the Rohingya, and also UN also calling for the uh, investig uh, crime against humanity, and which is also not only focused on the Rakhine, but in, in entire the whole country. I think that will be uh, very, uh, very important, especially not only the Rakhine area is happening, but also like Gachin State, Northern Panorama, and uh, in the past there's a lot of like, uh, in the current state, the eastern part of the Burma, there's a lot of the area, there's human rights violation happen. So it would be like not only saying, if international community, including UN, is not only saying um, that uh, investigate, in, investigate crime against humanity in the western part, it's like if, if it's cover the whole country, it will be really helpful for the Gachin community as well. And for me, um, um, this is how I feel. Like sometimes, like uh, we wanted to highlight the some uh, one issue, which is also very important. For example, in the West, like a lot of uh, like people, many people actually uh, suffer a lot, and I can't even uh, compare the situation. Um, but sometimes we wanted to highlight so that so that everybody to see. So uh, like when it's like when we make a bowl, but then the others like to make it like we don't need to make the others like other issue to make it smaller. What now I see is like it's becoming that way. Like um, the what the Rohingya issue, which is very important, but it just a pop up, and then the rest like become like like it doesn't like happen. Like, even they in the UN UNTA. Uh, resolutions they did not even mention like a change award like for three years so it's made me feel that we don't need to do that uh, especially like you know these are all like uh, serious crime and we can just uh, we can pressure UN's and also like many other international community to bring all this like human rights violation happening in an area so that we can uh, it's so difficult to walk, but it is a way that we can like, walk together. I'm not so sure that I answer your question here. Thank you. Um, I remember that civil war has been going on in Burma for, it seems like forever. Yes. Um, and I wonder where is the driver from? It's just the military are in control and they want to do what they're doing, but for what reason? Is it is there some the ethnic differences where they want to suppress anybody who isn't their ethnicity? Is there other business interests? Are there land interests? Who who wants to drive this on and on and not? No, live together. Yes, um, actually, I was also thinking a lot about it. Like, yeah. what's uh, all the driver of like pushing this? And when I like um, with my, <laughs> I try to like analyze uh, a little bit. I'm not an expert, but when I see it, there's a lot of like um, come up. Like, yes, for this um, military. Uh, and the related, um, they are illegal, and and also the yes, of course in Burma is also very um, there's many ethnic city, it's co kind of complex situation. Political is also com complex, so political is also one of the reasons, and also yes, also emotion like people like building up, building up, and then there is uh. uh in the past, the country been closed for many, many years, and then job people do not have much job opportunity. They're poor, and then all these depressions, 
and um, land issues obviously also happens like a lot of land taken like a lot of like issue uh, in terms of the lands so all I think there's a lot of the issue uh, the driving the conflict but I think that we can also uh, see like what are the main uh, main cause that's the driving so uh, it's for me, I will answer is militarizations and also like pushing, um, like very like centralized everything centralized and not like state doesn't have any authority to manage resources, <coughs> political and also their social cultural rights. So those are uh, the main reason why it's like pushing the conflict until now. Okay. Uh, concerning the abuse of civilians, specifically mm -hmm. sexual abuse of, of civilian women, is this the result of like a breakdown in discipline in, in the ranks, or has this been sanctioned or even ordered by the military? Um, so we we can really document like who whether they are order, but then some well some that's just rumor. We heard that some soldiers they said that we are. Uh, like order to do, like we are order, order to rape women. So that means that uh, they can go rape and when they like when they go to the front line, they can just go do whatever they want, and then they are not like uh, uh, judge, like um, like punish in in the in the in the military. Uh, so that was I think that was one one of the case. And these, um, uh, and when we look at all this case, for example, like I already mentioned, there are a couple of cases that we send the case all the way to Navy Door, that's like the highest uh, cost, but then uh, they just reject the case, like saying that, uh, uh, that there's no evidence. So although there is like evidence, there is a witness and evidence that this young girl was like uh, taking and in front of their own eyes, but it said that there is no evidence. So that means that the um, law is also protecting them. So it's just like I don't, I, I cannot say whether they are ordered it or, but like it, for sure they are protected from the legal, uh, like from the punishments. So. If you did not get any punishment for doing bad thing, then like for sure like the soldiers will be like doing on and on and on. So that's uh, that's the case. Yes. Hey, um, are there many foreign companies within the country, and then are there many foreign companies within Kachin State specifically? Um, actually, I didn't uh, did research about the investment. Uh, about the how many company, but there are some foreign company, uh, but I am not so sure how many. I will okay. I will do research and get back to you later. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, <laughs> so can I probe Lou's question again? Um, because in some ways, if the country is destabilized and uh, China is not going to be happy. Right, if they're investing in mines and all this, trying to build dams and roads, they don't particularly want war because that doesn't help them much. Um, so, so what is the incentive for the for the the military? Um, I think you know Lou was getting at that. What what is their incentive to uh, behave in this way rather than to build? Uh, you know, stable alliances with Rohingya and, you know, Kachin. It doesn't, it, it doesn't seem like for them there's much incentive for this continuing warfare <coughs> unless they think they can win and become total autocrats. So why do they keep fighting instead of negotiating peace agreements? Yes, that's a good question. Why, <laughs> why, why, great question. That's uh, why they stay doing it. I think um, I think the answer would be because they they wanted to control. Okay. Um, 
so if they is that everyone's unite, everyone's happy, and everyone got everything, then probably there might be no rule for the, for the military. So especially the uh, the Rohingya case, like they, now that they got uh, the military got uh, support from the uh, especially majority Buddhist people or from the people, they they see that uh, they are protect protect protector of the country. So and they gain their uh, their role and like uh, when they are attacking to Gachin's uh, Gachin's particularly there is a lot of these um, the civil society from the low Parabama and also many other ethnic groups like support the Gachin civil Gachin issue like what is happening so they support so that also condemn the military like uh, you are just like doing killing of the your brother like we are the same sibling so like they are condemned to the military but on the other side, like they are becoming like more protected. So I think that that's how like they were attacking to all the area. And actually, I didn't mention this. Like in the in in the past, the um, in the newspaper or even um, um, like legally, they say that KIA, the Independence Army, are uh, uh, um, what is that? Terrorists, right? right? So like they shift they uh, they are framing to uh, to make the people uh, afraid of them and also that they can easily to attack uh, attack them and so these people are terrorists so that they are attacking civilian uh, they are attacking civilian so that's why we have to protect the civilian when we are attacking we have to fight back to the KIA so that's like in the past they used and also. Oh, the KI is that we want federalism, and then they said uh, no. Federalism is uh, to break up. So, uh, so this this group wanted to be like uh, independent from the uh, country. So, so they use like different, um, different way, different frame to attack again the uh, the other groups. So that that's like how they were using it. I think another reason is that in many of these countries, nation state is a very modern concept, and the boundaries were like, I mean, established uh, artificially by the colonial powers. So there are a lot of autonomous movements going on everywhere in the region. So there is fear on the parts of governments also that if they give into the auto autonomy That's demands of yeah. one, one region, mm -hmm. there could be further demands from other regions. Mm -hmm. That's why governments aren't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand. It's it, it is it makes sense for them, but at the same time, for me, I think like if all the state has its own autonomy, and then also they make their own uh, like uh, they can they have their own ability to make the states you know grow, but at the same time, like you are not. Uh, if you are just in the whole like country, it's it's obviously it will be worked out. I think uh, every state need like some kind of some some level of freedom of uh, freedom or like yeah freedom of doing the control freedom or control of the political and also economy and the social and cultural. So especially Burma is very complex uh, because of the of Com about the complex that we have to go back the whole history <laughs> and the colony everything but I for me I agree I understand from government side but also like other the state they should also have their own uh, some level of the autonomy well um, as always unfortunately uh, we have to end the conversation because we are out of time but let's give um, a little round of applause please. <laughs>